Metropolitan regions like Cape Town, Johannesburg and Durban need more stringent lockdowns in rural areas which have been relatively untouched by the virus. The Health Minister, Dr. William Kiesa, seemed to raise this issue during a visit to the Western Cape this weekend. That province currently has over 5,000 infections of COVID-19. For more, I'm joined by the Baker Cesar Centre for Health Journalism's editor, Mia Malan. Uh, Mia, good evening to you. Thanks for your time once again on The Pulse tonight. It would seem, if we look just at the numbers and uh, presume that the numbers lead to lockdowns, we're going to see the big urban centres in South Africa locked down for a long time to come. Well, we don't really know that. I know in the Western Cape that um, Premier Alien Wind over the weekend said he would rather concentrate on hotspots and decrease the lockdown level sooner rather than later to get the economy going. But what we also heard was that the health minister said that he confirmed this weekend that we will certainly see different lockdown levels in different areas in the country depending on the transmission risk of the virus. Do we know when all of this is going? Do we know, I mean, the Western Cape seems to have particular challenges. There's a huge argument about whether it's because it's testing more people or whether it literally has more cases. Do you have a view on that? So scientists are really still figuring that out. I haven't heard a clear answer. What some experts say is that the Western Cape is three to four head, weeks ahead of the rest of the country with its outbreak. So they're in stage five, which is the outbreak stage, while the rest of the country is still in stage four, which is the community transmission stage. And that is why the Western Cape is testing in a more targeted way that they focus on hot spots rather than just general community testing because that's how you're supposed to test in an outbreak stage. And some politicians, like you've mentioned, are using that to say that because the province is focusing on hot spots, the positivity rate, so the number of the percentage of positive tests is higher because those areas will necessarily have a higher percentage of positive cases, but many scientists don't agree with that, and they say that doesn't necessarily explain the high infection rate. It's rather that the province is just ahead with its outbreak, and that COVID-19 is really not that unique in that regard, that other viral infections, such as influenza, also usually start in the Western Cape and then work their way up to the north. Okay, I mean, there's so many different things to consider when it comes to uh, uh, restrictions and lockdown and whether there should be changes. What for you are the main factors? We know that the lockdowns were to push out the number of infections, to push out the peak. Is it time to have a conversation right now about loosening up some of these restrictions? Well, I mean, we obviously hear um, in the media and everywhere that people are very, very concerned about the economy. So you have to find a balance balance between the science and the economy. There are some scientists that argue that a further lockdown at this stage wouldn't be beneficial for us, that, it, that there's really nothing. I mean, everyone agrees that there's really nothing we can do to stop the spread of the virus. We just use the lockdown to, to buy time. And there's a little bit of disagreement on whether the lockdown was successful with, you know, doing the right uh, type of testing, but most people at least agree that it was useful when it comes to buying time to prepare health facilities. It would obviously be, in a perfect world, we'll be looking at perfect data. We would know in real time where the infections were. The fact that we have imperfect data, we don't have all the facts, actually makes it very hard to plan. It does, and the Western Cape is an example. So normally when you hear of test results, say of today, it really tells you what the situation was two weeks ago because of the two-week incubation period of the virus. But now with backlogs in a province like the Western Cape where you could wait up to two weeks for your test results, you have to add that period. So in some cases it will tell you what is happening a month ago. So we, we're very likely looking at a situation that is already far worse than what the test results tell us. And then, of course, there is what the Western Cape can tell the rest of the country about what its pandemic will look like. Well, we can look at the Western Cape because it is ahead of us three to four weeks with its outbreak. And we're likely to, to follow the same trend, just like we're looking at Europe and at other countries at what happened there that are way ahead of us. So it certainly can give us some clues, but many 
many scientists and government officials and you know a range of experts um, sort of agree that the Western Cape is is having quite a good strategy for the for the outbreak that it's quite scientific it's quite targeted it is just that the outbreak is really a hit and there's nothing much that you can do to stop it we've also seen large numbers of people moving from the Western Cape to the Eastern Cape who actually have the virus it suggests then that the testing just isn't up to scratch at this stage and the Eastern Cape now is going to have to deal with those cases well, the, West, the, the Eastern Cape, while well, the Western Cape, uh, you know, tests the highest proportion of people in the country, the Eastern Cape does not test many people, and it still has a high number of cases. Um, if you look at it proportion-wise, I think it's like only fifth or sixth in the country, and how, sort of what, what part of the proportion they test. So the Eastern Cape is certainly going to have to speed up its testing and um, really test more people. Mia Malam, thanks very much indeed, the editor-in-chief at the Baker Caesar Centre for Health Journalism.